have an analyst with me, Mr. David Munyai, senior political analyst at the Confucia, Confucius Institute at the University of Johannesburg. Welcome to the show. Um, you're very much a BRICS expert. Um, just kick off. The big man himself has arrived uh, a little bit late. Um, Vladimir Putin this morning stepped off the plane. His presence here and his muscle here, what difference is it going to make to this conference? Uh, firstly, we shouldn't be surprised by uh, the delays by uh, Vladimir Putin. If that's his style. This is a man that uh, uh, meets the Pope, I mean, he comes late. Um, in the U.S., everywhere. So it's a, it's a style, and we shouldn't make a big deal out of it. Uh, nonetheless, again, him being here, it's a big issue. What's happening globally, I mean, tells that uh, the global politics is shifting, um, getting into a much more dangerous uh, uh, phase, and therefore I think the statements they're going to make and the direction of BRICS, uh, we have to read more into it to understand what's happening at, uh, globally particularly around issues of uh, protectionism, uh, what's happening in the Middle East. Uh, he is, uh, is a key player in, the, in, in Syria uh, currently. And therefore, I think uh, he's also an investor in a, in, in, in a way. I think for a country like South Africa, um, they, this kind of friendship is based on how deep your pockets are. So it really depends what kind of deals he's going to sign, if any. Uh, I think we should read more into that. Uh, it's, to what extent he answers our own domestic challenges, which is unemployment, uh, dealing with poverty, uh, changing our education system in terms of collaboration uh, with, with, with Russia. It is an important country, and we need to take it quite seriously. And what sort of deals do you think uh, Vladimir Putin will be looking for here in Africa? In Africa, broadly, I think Russia is interested in oil and is interested in nuclear. Um, that and went, um, and and in this country, uh, they had the last five, if not ten, there has been talk about a nuclear deal that never happened. So I think there should be clear message uh, coming from our own government. Where do we stand on that particular issue? Uh, are we going to have nuclear power? And if so. Who are the players? Is Russia involved? Is he going to compete with other players? So I think those are issues that we need to also look at. And into. speaking about uh, this government here, the chair of BRICS in South Africa, Sir Ramaphosa, as its uh, president, do you think, how do you think they're going to fare as the junior partner when they deal with these sort of worldwide heavyweights like Vladimir Putin? I think President Ramaphosa should be judged uh, not on the size of the economy and size of our population. He should be more judged fairly on how much he extracts from BRICS countries. In terms of really tangible investments, um, he managed to get something quite tangible from the Chinese. So that in itself, it's a clear indication that he's serious on investment in line with his 100 billion that he wants to get in the next five years. So he's somewhere, he's, non, he's no longer at the starting point so, but the bigger question is, how much could he get from Brazil, from India, and from Russia? So there is a need for South Africa to push harder, uh, and not being in these kind of clubs for the sake of uh, image branding and um, the kind of rhetorics that goes with this kind of uh, association. Rather, how much do we benefit? How much can we get from fellow BRICS countries critically on trade um, and other agreements that advance our national interest. I think that is the only thing that we need to look at President Ramaphosa to judge whether he's succeeding or failing. But one of the, the talking points uh, with the economist Marty Pai earlier in the show, and he was saying that, uh, don't forget China in particular, they come here for business. It's not like it's some sort of altruistic um, affair where you're sort of helping your uh, comrades out with money. It's a business thing. Um, and you think Russia is the same gravy? All countries, whether it's China, Russia, or United States, are driven by na their national interest. The bigger question is, what is our national interest? Uh, at times, it's a bit uh, not clear. And uh, I think we need to speak with one voice and not to undermine in terms of our position in international multilateral forums. We need to punch, punch above our weight and ensure that we gain maximum benefits out of these 
clubs that we are in. And therefore, uh, uh, BRICS is quite critical in the infrastructure development. A key area that is needed on the African continent within SADC itself. For SADC to industrialize, you need more and more investment and capital injection in our region as well as the continent. However, we have to do it in a much more smart way, ensure that it is in line with Agenda 2063. And therefore, it won't be South Africa going it alone, um, reaching out to fellow African states and ensure that we increase trade with Africa uh, than the outside world. And speaking of trade and speaking with one voice, it's clear that uh, all the BRICS nations are behind from what the South Africans have been saying, from what the Russians have been saying. They're behind China seeming to fight against this potential trade war that could be sparked off by the United States. Um, how likely is it, do you think, though, that Trump and his administration are going to back down at all over this, if they, even if BRICS says, no, we're not going to take it? Uh, President Trump is very unpredictable, and I think it's hard to really predict his next move. He might um, reverse all this as a negotiating um, uh, strategy, which I think it's, it is more likely yeah, to just being a negotiating strategy. It's hurting U.S. Um, uh, investments, it's hurting U.S. farmers, for instance, and therefore one is expecting some changes. But should the trade war continue, we are the ones who are going to suffer most because the biggest volume of our trade is with, with, with China. Um, and any uh, trade war, smaller countries like us, I mean, as we say in Africa, when two elephants fight, it, it, it is this the, the grass, grass that suffers. That gets but we also not need to be depressed about it. The bigger question we need to ask mm -hmm. ourselves is what advantage are there when big giants are fighting? Uh, already um, with China on the deal side, there is more room for South African beef entering China. What it means is that China will lessen its imports from the United States and look more alternative markets. We should be ready and do more work in terms of stability in our agriculture sector and ensure that we produce more that China could buy from us because we are not the only ones. Brazilians are waiting um, and the rest of the continent as well. So we have to think strategically and take advantage of the chaos that is out there. So, uh, I mean, a very senior minister, who was the main name, was said to me yesterday, they said, um, we're hoping that BRICS countries are going to come to us when they need goods and agriculture goods and technology and what have you, instead of if they're sort of blocked out of the United States. Is it as simple as that, though? I mean, is it as simple as that? Is it as simple as that? It is not. Um, with tensions rising, um, I think what is worrying me is the fight between Washington and, and Beijing around uh, Made in China 2025. And some of these high tech that are being blocked uh, from United States, if they come here, should the United States go to a level of imposing sanction on, on China? And I hope it won't happen. If it does, it will also have implication on us because we now are um, embracing more and more of Chinese high tech. So we, we have to calculate. I think what is needed more than anything else is to have our business community, our government, have people who really think deep and plan longer than our mere five years planning um, to calculate and, and see that our new friends these days is not just United States or European Union. We have so many friends and uh, we need to have issue-based relation and ensure different sectors of our economy, which countries do we look to and what kind of deals do we enter and what are the implications in terms, um, in terms should anything happen, uh, should uh, a war happen, a real hot war, uh, what, what do we do? We need to have those answers and I doubt very much if we do at the moment.